Jesus wants to pour his divine mercy on the whole world. Something very significant occurred in Poland on 22nd of February, 1931. Jesus appeared to St. Faustina Kowalska and ordered her to have an image of him painted to show his divine mercy, with the red rays for his precious blood and the white rays for the water that gushed forth from him when he died for all our sins on the cross. He told her to put the words, Jesus, I trust in you, on the image. Jesus also told St. Faustina, Say the chaplet of my mercy, to have a special feast day, I desire the Feast of Mercy to be a refuge and shelter for all souls, especially poor sinners. It is my desire that it be solemnly celebrated on the first Sunday after Easter. Jesus also said to pray a novena preceding the Feast of Mercy. I desire that during these nine days you bring souls to the fountain of my mercy. On the sixth day of the novena, Jesus told St. Faustina, Today, Bring to me the meek and humble souls, and the souls of little children, and immerse them in my mercy. Around the world, the foundation of Jesus, the Divine Mercy, is encouraging children to answer the call to pray. The Blessed Mother asks us to pray the Holy Rosary, and Jesus asks us to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Even though we can pray at any time or at any place, the best place to pray is in the real presence of Jesus as we adore Him in the Most Blessed Sacrament. The mission of Jesus, the Divine Mercy Foundation, began as a tiny seed in 1992 within Pat Polachek, the president and co-founder in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the USA. Pat suffered for nearly four years with a herniated disc condition, and during a healing service led by Father Ralph Diorio, founder of the Apostolate of Divine Mercy and Healing, Pat received the merciful, healing love of Jesus in a profound way. Following her healing, God watered that seed through Pat's involvement in teaching religious education to the children. Pat also led the confirmation candidates as they performed works of mercy throughout the community. This ignited within her the desire to share His merciful love in a deeper way with those in need, especially children. In 1995, in Dallas, Texas, God planted another seed within Kate Paypack. Kate's profound compassion for the hurting child within each of us has grown, and her personal testimony of healing brings fullness to the Foundation's mission of mercy, healing, and hope. In 2003, during a pilgrimage to the home of St. Padre Pio in San Giovanni Rotondo, Italy, Pat prayed before the crucifix in the area where Padre Pio received the stigmata, becoming spiritually bonded with St. Pio. Two years later, in the same area, she was inspired to have a prayer garden built, the Rotondini, the small rotundo to honor St. Pio in Monongahela, Pennsylvania, the golden rose unfolding. In 2006, God continued to water as He reunited Pat and Kate once again through St. Pio, and the two began to collaborate in writing the story of the Golden Rose unfolding. Solemn dedications of Phase 1 and 2 of the Rotundini were held in 2006 and 2007 with Father Andrew Apostoli, EWTN Sunday Night Prime Host and Vice Postulator for the Canonization of Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen and Father Angelus Shaughnessy, well-known preacher at EWTN, presiding. The Golden Rose continued to unfold in 2007 with the inception of the Servants of the Little Way prayer group at the Rotondini. St. Therese of Luzur, the patron of this group, as well as the patron of missionaries throughout the world, blessed the group by sending an unexpected red rosebud on a dormant rosebush on November the 2nd, the day of the first prayer meeting. Throughout the next three weeks, the rose continued to unfold and on November 23rd, despite near freezing temperatures and an early morning snowfall, a beautiful red rose in full bloom with snow upon its petals could be seen. At the lovely sight of this special gift, these inspirational words were received. In the midst of death and barrenness, I choose to bring forth new life. Along with those words came the understanding that God alone can bring His merciful healing, His new life into the lives of His broken, hurting children and adults. Throughout the next few years, works of mercy were developed and ministered at the Rotundini of St. Pio, including retreats, healing services, prayer meetings, Eucharistic adoration, and a bi-monthly soup kitchen. 
When St. Therese's shower of roses resumed in 2010, this time with a beautiful gold rose, its meaning came swiftly. It is a new chapter. The following month, Pat providentially visited the Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Krakow, Poland, and met Antoni Zabrowski, who would soon become the Foundation's co-founder. Antony, proficient in seven languages, is employed at the Shrine. He, too, experienced the merciful healing of God in his life and is all too familiar with the plight of the many homeless and needy who frequent the Shrine and who are, indeed, among those in most need of Jesus' mercy. Antony arranged for Pat to meet with Cardinal Stanisław Dziwisz and ask his permission to have a replica of the chapel where Jesus appeared to St. Faustina built in the Pittsburgh area. He was pleased to grant that request with his blessing. Pat returned to Poland to attend the World Apostolic Congress on Mercy in 2011. On St. Faustina's feast day, Cardinal Dziwisz empowered the thousands in attendance to take the spark of the divine mercy to the world. At that moment, Antony was inspired and shared with Pat he believed they will both be taking the message of the Divine Mercy to children all over the world, in schools, orphanages, parishes, and hospitals. God began the work quickly, and within days of Pat's return to the USA, the message of the Divine Mercy was shared with her priest friends, Very Reverend John Tachi from Ghana in Africa, and also Father Peter Abwe from Nigeria. The group was inspired to have the children pray on the World Mission Rosary, which Fulton Sheen began in 1951 through the Pontifical Mission Society. All over the world, children are learning to pray for the five different continents, Africa, Americas, Europe, Oceania, and Asia. They are growing in faith in Jesus and His merciful love and practicing the virtue of purity. Especially in Nigeria and Africa, Father Peter tells the children and parents about St. Faustina's faith and the virtue of purity. In Nigeria, as in many countries around the world, there is a difficult challenge to change the pattern of watching programs of violence and immorality on the TV and home videos by adults and children alike. Father Peter is taking on that challenge. He encourages them to replace those programs with godly programs that will help them develop a moral character grow closer to Jesus, and live the lives meant for them by their Creator. At the Rabka Hospital in Poland, children learn about Jesus the Divine Mercy and receive the Mission Rosaries. In Costa Rica, many processions took place throughout the city honoring Jesus the Divine Mercy. Thousands of Divine Mercy prayer cards were given to the children, especially to those receiving their First Holy Communion. During Mercy Tour No. 1 in 2012 in San Giovanni Rotundo, Italy at the John Paul II Poly Clinic, co-founders Pat, Antony, and Father Andrew Mulka, director of the Good Rays Polish Children's Ensemble Group, performed a concert for the patients and staff. The group brought joy to children sick with cancer, and they received gifts including the World Mission Rosaries. Also in San Giovanni Rotundo, radio interviews took place at Teleradio Padre Pio. The entire group shared the story of Jesus the Divine Mercy. The group attended the papal audience with Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI and the Holy Father blessed the group. Jesus the Divine Mercy Foundation received the papal letter and apostolic blessing on their work. The group traveled to Medjugorje and visited the drug rehabilitation community of Comunita Chinacolo. The members and their children enjoyed learning about Jesus the Divine Mercy. A joy-filled concert was held by the Good Rays, and together they prayed the Chaplet of the Divine Mercy. Children in the USA in the town of Monongahela, Pennsylvania, at the Madonna Regional Catholic School also gathered to learn about Jesus the Divine Mercy. The Faith Formation class at St. Damien Parish learn about the merciful love and forgiveness of Jesus. Jesus asks us to be merciful, kind, loving, and forgiving of our family and friends. They learn how important it is to watch the godly programs on TV, videos, and to pray the chaplet for their families and the whole world. Presentation was made to the children at the American Czestochowa Polish School in Doylestown, Pennsylvania in the USA. On the sixth day of the Divine Mercy Novena, when Jesus said, Bring to me the souls of little children and Father Andrew organized a pilgrimage for 300 kindergarten children at the Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Wagowniki, Poland. 
Father Andrew and Pat shared the story of Jesus the Divine Mercy with the children at the shrine, encouraging them to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. The children venerated the image of Jesus and the relics of St. Faustina in the old chapel, and Father Andrew led the children in an afternoon filled with joy and celebration as they assembled a large puzzle of Jesus and St. Faustina. Meetings were held and blessings received from Bishop Antony Dugush from Chestahova. Several meetings were held and blessings received from Cardinal Stanisław Dziwisz of Krakow, Poland. In 2013, the story of Jesus the Divine Mercy and how he is touching hearts was shared with Mother Superior Wakasha at the Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Wagowniki, Poland. She inspired the group to use Jesus' words from the sixth day of the Novena. Today, bring to me the meek and humble souls and the souls of little children and immerse them in my mercy. In June 2013, 2,000 First Communicants processed several miles in St. Faustina's hometown as they prayed the Holy Rosary and the Divine Mercy Chaplet. The following week, a presentation was made to the nearly 10,000 members of the Backyard Rosary Group in Czestochowa, Poland. Bishop Antony, Father Andrew, Pat, and Antony share the message of Jesus the Divine Mercy, encouraging the multitudes of children and their parents to pray the chaplet, do works of mercy, and live pure godly lives. A gathering of over 500 students from the Holy Rosary Academy took place in October in Sipile, Philippines. The message delivered by Gary Seely received a standing ovation. The principal was spiritually moved and plans to have the children pray the chaplet several times a month. The Foundation had been praying that a suitable melody would be found for the Children's Divine Mercy Chaplet, and Pat met the Rena family, who were the opening performers at the 14th Annual Catholic Family Conference in Wichita, Kansas in 2013. I was praying for a way to teach children the chaplet in a way that would be easy to learn and easy to teach. So I wanted it to be fun for them to learn. I wanted them to have motions so that they could incorporate the words and do the motions and be able to, to get the words in their head so that they would have it and be able to recall it at any time. And the motions help for them to remember the words. It's never too early to teach children. The Divine Mercy Chaplet in Motion. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The first Family Eucharistic Holy Hour was held in May of 2015 at Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, with over 300 students, Pastor Father Ken King, Knights of Columbus in full regalia, under the direction of Darcy Smith and Principal Kimberly Stevenson. The chaplet was sung bilingually for the first time on Divine Mercy Sunday 2015 at St. Thomas the Apostle Catholic Church in Alabama. In November 2013, members of the Foundation were guests on Father Apostoli's Sunday Night Prime program on EWTN. How do you see, uh, do you see uh, people responding then? How, how did that group go last night? You told me it was a wonderful it group. It was a wonderful blessing. Mm -hmm. The little ones, even though um, they couldn't talk, they could move their hands in the motions with spoke a thousand words. <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. That's one of the things, you know, to teach children their faith. Mm -hmm. Music yes. is a great thing. Uh, we started playing music for the kids. They could all sing. You know, yes. they knew all the words yes. to, the, to the songs. So you're on the right track. Yes. You know. A profound encounter is about to take place as each child contemplates Jesus in the most blessed sacrament. They will gaze upon him and he will gaze back lovingly during this unique program, the Family Eucharistic Holy Hour. Schools and parishes unite during hours of prayer in the real presence of Jesus with Our Lady of Fatima, the Color Corps Knights of Columbus, and the Blue Army. Families are praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet in reverent motion, lifting up their minds, hearts, voices, their entire being to God. They answer our Blessed Mother's call to pray the Holy Rosary by praying the World Mission Rosary. Answer the call. 
Engage your family in prayer. Unite and together receive the gift of His divine mercy. For more information about the Golden Rose Unfolding, visit JesusTheDivineMercy.com.